your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. Infinite complacency. People went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Welcome to another edition of Into the Fray. First, thanks for being here. If you enjoy ITF, please rate and review it. This helps others find it, which turns into more people with encounters for me to interview. If you'd like more content than the free weekly edition, go to IntoTheFrayRadio.com and click Become an Insider. It's only $4.99 a month or $54 for an entire year. And if you have an encounter you'd like to share... Email me at shannon at intothefrayradio.com. If you've got shorter stories, feel free to call the hotline, 877-317-9111. You can call that anytime, toll free. My first book, Beyond the Fray Bigfoot, co-authored with best-selling author G. Michael Hoff, is available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle editions. Once you're finished, please take a moment to leave a rating and review. For signed and personalized copies, send $19.99 via PayPal, free shipping within the U.S. only, to beyondthefrayllc at gmail.com. And last but not least, Jeff and I have created Beyond the Fray Publishing. So, if you've got a book you'd like us to publish for you, send us an email at info at beyondthefraypublishing.com. For general questions and information on us, visit our website beyondthefraypublishing.com. Books we consider will need to be in the genres cryptid, paranormal, or true crime, both fiction and nonfiction. Thanks again, and that will do it for now. So, on to the show. As I mentioned in the email back to you, this is one of the creepier emails I think that I've received. Uh, I mean, I get a, a lot of correspondence and a lot of creepy stuff a lot of the times, but when I read yours, there was something real uh, special in a very creepy way about yours because I'm instantly, I have my no list and I'm kind of going, I don't think I'd want to see that or those things uh, on the way to work. You're already on the way to work. It's not that pleasant. And then to have to see what you did. Uh, so, I mean, thank you for contacting me and being willing to share this encounter. Yeah, of course. And before I had contacted you, I hadn't told anyone about it. I kind of just kept it to myself and, you know, just dealt with all the nightmares and being scared to leave my house in the morning, <laughs> you know, just by myself. And um <laughs> So it was it was a relief to be able to actually get it out there and say this is something that happened and I don't know what it was. <laughs> well, yeah, and I hope that when everybody you, you listen to this whole thing and, and what she's gone through, she's going to stay anonymous for this, guys, but you can always get in touch with me. We are looking for, you know, any similar encounters of such a thing. So um, let's start off just by saying kind of, you know, maybe the state that you were in and what's the situation out there? Is it really rural? You know, wh- how close are your neighbors? That kind of a thing. And I know that we also also should uh, describe but what kind of a drive you, you have to work and why you were out at that time of day. Sure. Um, so the area I live in, um, in Iowa, it's, it's very rural. I live in a, a very small town. There's no big cities anywhere near us. So I had to, um, I had to travel um, and commute to work to a bigger city and it would take you know an hour and a half <laughs> on a good day you know at the end of the day it would 
maybe longer depending on traffic. But um, I would have to be at work at five in the morning. So I would leave my house at three thirty um, and drive. And like I said, it's very rural, kind of these not very well traveled highways. And most of the time it would just be me, the only car out there um, until I got a lot closer to the city. So a lot of the drive, it was just me out in the dark in my car. <laughs> so you had been doing this drive, nothing new. It, it sounds pretty brutal considering the, the time that you would have to get up, but I suppose you get used to uh, the craziest of things, right? Especially the time that you might have right. to get to work. So yep. um, I remember in your email, you kind of mentioned like the, I mean, the weather was clear. So, you know, it wasn't like rainy. There was nothing obstructing your vision through the windshield, anything like that, right? Exactly. Yep. It was, it was a clear day. I remember it being pretty dark out. I mean, you can always see the stars and then the moon, but it was, it seemed uh, darker than usual. So I don't know if we were, moon was waning or, you know, something like that. But just as I remember it, and even in like the dreams, I just, I remember it just being so, so dark, just black out there past my headlights. And, you know, a lot of the trip, it's, I mean, it's Iowa, so it's just cornfields, most of it. But so I, I left my house at 3.30 on the day that this happened. And about within 10 minutes of leaving my hometown and my house, there's a small creek with a kind of densely wooded area. And this, so I got to this bridge and I could see kind of something just past it, just kind of at the edge of my headlights. And, um, you know, there's a lot of animals out. It's Iowa. So I slowed down a little and I was getting ready for it to either come out or go away, but it didn't move. <clears throat> and so then I thought, well, maybe it's, you know, nothing. Someone left some equipment or something on the side of the road because it it seemed big from where I could see but then as I kind of got closer I didn't have too long enough to speculate before I could like make out the details of it and it looked like it was a, a person like an extremely tall person kind of just sitting at the side of the road facing the road but with their knees pulled up to their chest and like their arms wrapped around their knees. And like they, they weren't looking at me and it wasn't moving. It looked like it was looking down the road, the opposite way of where I was coming from. Um, and so, you know, then I, I was like, okay, so this is just a person. And then it's three thirty in the morning and as I got closer, I realized that it was too tall to be a, a, an actual person. It was, I'd have to say, eight feet tall. Um, it had it, dark skin. Sorry, this is very no. It's hard okay. To talk no, about. yeah. Take take your time. Um, and it had this black hair. Um, I remember kind of it shining in my headlight. Um, maybe like it had come out of the water in the creek or I don't know. <laughs> but um, when I got closer, I just, I had this feeling of just, this is wrong, like wrong, wrong. <laughs> and I was still going slower. I mean, you can only drive 55 in Iowa. So I was slow anyway, but it was slower than that because I had originally thought it was some animal. Then um, as I got closer to it and I started making out details on it, it turned and um, it seemed to like stare right at me. Um, and I just remember this stab of panic of being seen by this thing. Um Sorry. That's okay. No, you're you're doing a really good job. I I'm trying to follow along. I'm looking at the email that you sent, and um, I think it's at this point that I was going, "Oh my, oh my goodness, this is a horrible thing that I would not want to see." 
yep. <laughs> and so, I mean, I had, I only had to see it for a few seconds, but I knew that it had seen me. And so right away, you know, I sped back up and I kept, <laughs> I kept relocking my doors <laughs> and it, it sounds crazy, but I was just kept checking my mirrors and it's black. I couldn't see anything once I was past it. Um, but I just, every few minutes I would just keep checking my locks to make sure they were still locked. (laughs) And the whole time I was just trying to calm myself down and say, tell myself, obviously it was nothing. Like it was some animal. You're falling asleep while you're driving. (laughs) You hallucinated this thing. It was nothing, (laughs) you know? And it just, I mean, there are farms around, so like well maybe it was a cow you know because of the black body and like this white face like it could have been and so I'd half convinced myself by the time I got to the next town that like it was just maybe like a cow which doesn't make sense because there's not any actual like dairy farms or anything that close to that Mm. area but (laughs) I you know anything to convince myself it was not something terrifying you know (laughs) So between the town that I live in and the city that I worked in, there was only one other town. And by the time I had got to that town, it's around the halfway mark. And I was mostly calmed down at that point. <laughs> you know, I had tried to rationalize this whole thing away. And I um, stopped and got some water and took a few minutes <laughs> around some people <laughs> Um and then I got back on the road, just like normal, and everything was fine. And then I got about 10 minutes out of that town, and it gets into this hilly, kind of hilly area where the road's pretty narrow, and there's really nowhere to go, and there's um, these kind of steep hills on the side of the road. And I got to this particularly steep hill, and right as I got to the top of it, this thing the same thing I had seen was crouched there in the middle of the road. Like it was waiting for me. Like just in case I had convinced myself like I did that it was nothing. It wanted to remind me that it was still there. (laughs) And I don't, I remember I screamed and swerved and um, I must have, the rest of the way to work because I got there I was there earlier but I don't remember the rest of that trip at all I remember being in the parking lot at work with my hands you know white on the steering wheel and uh just tears rolling down my face and I I couldn't remember how I got there (laughs) Uh, I've never I've never seen it again thankfully but I you know, I still worry about it. <laughs> I don't ever want to see it come back. So. I'm so sorry about that. And I, I thank you for being brave enough to, you know, to speak it out loud to me. I really appreciate that. And, uh, uh, gosh, so many, so many questions, right? Like first, what in the actual hell is that thing <laughs> or things Did, when you got into work? Because you're visibly upset. Did your coworkers say anything to you? Um, by the time that, because like I said, like for some reason I, I was there earlier. Like I said, I must have been speeding because <laughs> I was there earlier. So I had some time in the parking lot to just kind of collect myself. I, I know, I remember um, a lot of them saying I was very quiet that day, more quiet than usual. I didn't have a lot to say <laughs> to anybody. <laughs> I could imagine why. You must have just been replaying that over and over and over again in your head. Like it's not yeah. enough to see it once, but you saw it twice. Of course, so do you think, do you think, because obviously whatever that was, it's not from around here. What, wherever it's from, it's not exactly mm-hmm. a normal thing. Are you thinking that it was the same creature somehow or it was... A, a second creature of the same whatever the heck this thing is my my initial feeling that is that it was the same one 
and that it had been following or because like I said, that feeling of knowing that it saw me yeah, was like, I don't know. That was, I think the worst part. If it hadn't turned its head and looked at that first one, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it just would have been weird and not completely terrifying. Exactly. And then for it to show up again, like oh. it was waiting. It was just. When I read that part of the email, I thought that I was, I was like, I was not expecting that at all because the first part was already like, holy cow enough. So I, I just, mm -hmm. I can't imagine. And you know that you're out there completely alone. Like you said, you're out there. Yep. Three thirty, four, four o'clock in the morning. Nobody's out there. That's part of your commute, being out there by yourself. Yep. Occasionally, I would see maybe like a state trooper, but never this close to like my home. And so, it, like for most of the trip, I would say a good two thirds of it was just me out on the road in my car. So, <laughs> I'm just glad that you know you didn't you know, like overcorrect a, a, the swerve or something and end up mm -hmm. on the side of the road without being able to move and afraid that the thing is going to come up after you. That, I mean, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I mean, I'm not trying to, because I know you, and I want to talk about this too, because you obviously, you say you still have nightmares about it, but what kind mm -hmm. of details do you remember about this thing let's, let's start with the with the body you know so it, it's crouched mm -hmm. down it's pretty much on its on its bum and then with its uh, arms around its knees did you see any mm -hmm. hands you said it was pretty slender right so yes it was um extremely thin um i would say you know emaciated it it didn't look like it was wearing any kind of clothing but its skin was black or like dark gray Except for the face, which was like dark bone white. And then it had that long black hair that was hanging in its face when it looked at me. I didn't get a good look at eyes, um, probably because of the hair. Maybe a good <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, that's why it's that feeling of like being, knowing it saw me was even weirder because I didn't get to see its eyes. Right. That I can remember, but it must have had them <laughs> so did it did it have from what you could see a human shaped face or did did anything elongate out anything different no it i would i would say it more it looked more human from what i could tell um i just but like i said way too tall to be an actual person at least eight feet tall so like its knees, you know, where our knees come up, most of most people, you know, when we're crouched down like that and sitting on our bum. So its knees were shoved way probably up further than a, a normal person's would be. That's why you got the inkling that it would be around eight feet tall. It'd be very tall. Yes. Yeah. It just looked it. Yeah. It looked way too, I don't know, stretched <laughs> like it had the arms looked so thin, but too long. You know, and I can make out long fingers. Mm. Now, I couldn't see any, like, claws or anything. It looked like fingers wrapped around, like, you know, you would wrap your arms around each right. other, around your knees. And it looked like that, but it just looked unnaturally tall and and slender. Did you see and, its feet at all? Not that I can remember looking at, but I was so caught up with Yeah everything else yeah the problem that it actually looked at you right <laughs> i mean uh, yeah turned its head yeah. you're like no 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 yeah just that turning its head to look <sighs> to look right at me it was just it was i don't know my brain blanked i didn't know what to do <laughs> i think you were allowed at that point to be honest with you holy cow uh was this on your your side or passenger side it was the driver's side when I first saw it on so my side and then when I came on it the second time it was just right in the middle of the road mm -hmm. just right at the top of this hill right that's why you're thinking it was the same one because the second mm -hmm. time you saw it it had this very forward posture and way of being in the road mm -hmm. so and then the second time it was still in the same position right Nope, it was it was crouched like it was gonna get ready to spring. Okay, the second time, so I, that's why I was kind of 
I almost wish it would have been in the exact same position because then I could write it off as like, I hallucinated this. I was overtired <laughs> and I my brain made this thing up. <laughs> right, like you put some cut out on, on the road a couple of times and okay. I mean, that would still uh -huh. be a little uh, disturbing, right? If you're still, like, well, if my brain weird. did that, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, why but, would my brain make up this thing? Because right. I had never seen anything that looked like it before. Right, and you and not did for quite a while after. Even. Yeah. Well, and and you sent me some images that you found online that were as close as you could find to mm -hmm. what you saw. Uh, I mean, did it take you a while to even do that search to to kind of wrap your brain around the fact that okay, I think I really did see that. I didn't imagine it, so I I should look this up. Yeah. Um, so it, it actually wasn't. I wasn't even looking for the thing that I saw, honestly. Um, I was listening to a different podcast, um, The Ghost Story Guys, with Brennan and Ian. Yes. Um, and that was like this just a few months ago. It was in September, I would say. Um, and they one of their early episodes is about the Wendigo. And I was like, I don't know anything about this. What is this? You know, it sounded like an in interesting piece of lore so I wanted to research it and look it up and so when I went on you know Google and, and searched it and images start popping up and um, so I scrolled over a few and then I saw one that looked so much like what I saw that day that I just I I panicked I <laughs> I I just kind of froze and I stared at it and you know and I, not to say it was a Wendigo but just that image of it reminded me so much of it that I finally just had to, you know, I had to write to you and I had to tell somebody that I saw whatever this was. Uh, so I have I did print out the entire email uh, since we've had a good back and forth between the two of us. And there is another part to the story if you're still okay to share it. But I'm looking at those two uh, images and there's there's the one with horns, and then there's the one without horns. Which one of those two was, in fact, the one that you felt like was closer to the one that the the ones that you saw? Um, without horns. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait till you yeah. guys see this. I will put I will put that image in uh, show notes. I won't be able to use that as the episode image unless I can get mm -hmm. a hold of the you know the person that created it. But oh my gosh. I'm sorry about that. That's, you know, oh my gosh. I mean, it's not like you can just, okay, guys, we're going to move. We're going to move into the big city uh, next week. Right. And I, I'm not going to do my drive anymore because I'm quitting my job and working from home somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, and honestly, within the next week, I did end up leaving that job. Right. Which um, is part of, be because yeah. Because of yeah. the issues afterward. <laughs> right. Which may actually tie in which we need to get into before we do did you tell your husband about it and what did he say I told him about it kind of as I was sending you that initial email and he's he's pretty skeptical he doesn't really believe in the supernatural so he's he's pretty sure that I that I must have seen something he he still thinks it's probably a cow. First, he said it would be it was maybe a badger because they have that black and white coloring. But I was like, it was way too big. It's a big old badger. I was like, it's not a badger. <laughs> if you could have caught that you. thing, if it was a badger, you'd be <laughs> you guys would be rich. I mean, if that was a new species of badger right there, <laughs> right? Some <laughs> some supernaturally large badger. And he has mange um, though. He's got no hair. Right. <laughs> So he doesn't really believe, um, he doesn't believe in it, but he, he believes that I saw something that frightened me, but he's pretty sure I was having, you know, like a hypnagogic state or because I was tired, but I had been making that drive at that time of day for eight months at that time. Right. So it wasn't like it was a new thing driving at three thirty in the morning. Right. So. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the next part of this, and this was something that it kind of came up uh, after we had been talking on email for a little bit. 
and you kind of realize something and you're like, um, mm -hmm. I put together a time frame here of something kind of, um, kind of, it's interesting and it, but it could be disturbing at the same time. Right. A few days after. So we'll say that day I got to work and I, I worked. Um, I had the next day off of work, thankfully, so I didn't have to go back out. <laughs> um, and then I worked um, over that next weekend. And while I was at work, I started having these um, physical symptoms and went into the ER and they thought that I was going to have a miscarriage. Um, I was, I'd recently found out I was um, pregnant and I don't, I don't know if, if the two are related. Um, it was a really stressful time um, after I'd seen this being out there by myself and driving and luckily I didn't have a miscarriage but I did leave that job for my health mostly but I I won't lie and say that I wasn't scared of running into this thing again right um, like a slight relief on that point but at the same token mm -hmm. it was obviously terrifying that there was a chance that you could lose a baby. So immediately what the doctors do is they reduce your stress, right? So they're like, okay, well, you're yeah. not going to get up at, you know, 2.30 in the morning to leave by 3.30. Like, that's not going to happen. So that drive exactly. is out. And and I'm not going to take, you know, credit for the theories because you're the one that put them in the email. So, you know, mm -hmm. you have two different theories as far as a good and a bad for the, um, for the, for the Wendigo. I mean, that's what we're calling it, whatever it, it may have yeah. been. So, yeah, go ahead and tell people what, what you put in the email for me. Sure. Um, so, since I emailed you, I was like, well, I should probably know at least something <laughs> about the Wendigo. So, I did some research and I read a few um, a few books. And I found that a lot of times in kind of Algonquin and um, Creek lore that the Wendigo kind of was related to issues with family and and pregnancy sometimes and so it kind of got me thinking that if this is something that my brain conjured up you know could it have been a manifestation of something trying to warn me you know was it trying to warn me um, about my stress level and you know the danger of being out there while pregnant right um, and or could it have shown up and looked at me and seen me, um, this creature, and negatively affected or tried to negatively affect my pregnancy? And I don't know. When you read that, uh, how did that make you feel? I mean, did you get angry or did, I mean, uh, a scared is probably always there, but did that make you a little mm -hmm. bit angry and like really, really worried about what was going on? It, it kind of did, yeah. Um, it's it was just such a lot of a lot of feelings in that time. But you know, if I had seen that thing and not been pregnant, would it have affected me? Would I have not even seen it if I wasn't pregnant? Right. <laughs> right. Like, or would it I would I have still seen it that first time, but maybe not the second? You know, and. Um, could it have seen me and sensed, you know, that I was pregnant and then and then decided to come try and track me down for that second that mm. second sighting? I don't know. It's frustrating, you know, because I'll never have answers. I won't know. <laughs> no, and that's the worst part about it, right? Well, and not that I'd want to try and get answers from this thing. I would prefer to never <laughs> see it again. <laughs> yeah, he can stay wherever the heck he's from, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I mean... Whatever it was. <laughs> the logistics, though. And obviously, mm -hmm. like I said, it's not from around here, whatever it is. But you're talking exactly. about, you said like a half an hour between the first time you saw it and the second time. Mm -hmm. yeah. How in the world did it do that? You know, well, like... It had to be extremely fast or... <laughs> Or been able to just yeah get Pop. there. I yep. don't know. Like, blink, there I am. Which, uh, 
Oh my gosh, I don't know. That that thing is just so wrong in in so many ways. Um, and you know, you're really awesome because, and guys, she did she did a lot of research and and put it all in the email for me. I didn't even have to go back and look at basically anything because even for the for the bad side of theories which you said, you know, maybe the sighting actually created the danger to the pregnancy. You said that it was the, the uh, Cree legend that the Wendigo represented uh, mm-hmm. kind of a danger to uh, health and family and home. So, mm-hmm. and again, guys, anything like this that you've experienced, your family's experienced, your your great, 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 great grandparents once wrote it down that you can barely read, send it to me i would love to forward it to her to just anything comparable just let me know shannon at end of the com. but and i don't know any details of this next part so uh this is totally up to you how how much you want to go into this but the last portion was the fact that you said there's been some strange things going on in your house yes so, and, oh, did we? I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Did we say that 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 sighting that we just covered was August of 2017? I'm not sure that we did. Yeah, sorry. Yep, August sorry. 2017. So. We might have already done that. I apologize, guys. She might have said that in the onset, but I didn't want to because people will be yelling like, "When did that happen?" Because um, <laughs> that's always is an important part because that could have been 10 years ago or you know whatever. Um, yeah. Okay, so August 2017, you have the sighting of that Mm -hmm. horrific creature and so when is this stuff starting to go on in your house so we've always had um kind of little things going on um since we moved in which is kind of 2016 ish like normal old house stuff like you can kind of see stuff out of the corner of your eye like ducking around corners and stuff like that, (laughs) Um, which I just write off because I kind of, I grew up in a house that had some, Mm. my (laughs) my mom would say, (laughs) our, our, um, our family ghosts. Um, (laughs) No way. Yeah. (laughs) Like family ghosts, meaning like it would follow you guys around? Like if you moved? Um, a couple of them. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, the plot Um, thickens, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but I kind of just write this all off because it's, you know, I I grew up with this kind of, that kind of activity, which is, it's funny because I always believed in ghosts, but I never believed in anything else. So I drew the line at like, <laughs> here's, you know, ghosts and spirits, sure. Well, ghosts Everything seem else, tame to what you saw. Nah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I would take the, the ghosts any day over whatever the heck that thing was. Right, exactly. (laughs) Okay, sorry, I I interrupted. No, that's okay. Um, But since I emailed you, it seems to have kind of made things a little more active here, which was Mm. weird. My my middle son, he's um, kind of been having these night terrors, and he won't sleep in his room anymore. He said he saw red eyes in there. Aww. So he won't sleep in there. And But I think the weirdest thing that's happened is probably um, a week and a half after I initially contacted you, I went outside to go to work because I still kind of, I still have to travel for work, but not as far. Mm-hmm. Um, and I left the house um, at five o'clock in the morning, um, which is a lot better than 3.30. But as soon as I stepped out the door, I got this this kind of sick feeling and I could hear this kind of growling breathing Mm. and it sounded like it was on my roof so I took a couple steps out I heard this breathing and I backed right back into the house (laughs) and I just I closed the door and I just stood there and (laughs) I didn't know what to do I just stood there and you poor thing. You're like, I, nope, had enough of this. Nope. Exactly. I I don't know. I was like, I'll be late for work. I'm going to wait a few minutes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, because what time does the sun come up right now out there? Like oh, gosh. 6, 30, seven, like close yeah, to 7, seven, maybe? Like, yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. go <laughs> get your husband or did you just wait a few minutes and then just run out <laughs> to the car? 
I just waited a few minutes and then oh, I like bless your heart. Oh my god, the car. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, sometimes I mean, ever since that incident in 2017, I would get this feeling going to my car sometimes, like I would need to just get in and lock the doors right, right. away immediately. Like just this watched feeling, but like I had never heard anything, but I was just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. it like this growling breathing. It sounded like it was coming from above me as soon as I stepped out the door. But then 10 minutes later, when I went back out, it was, it wasn't there. It didn't happen again. And, and did so you, was, but did you still have that heavy, sicky, panicky feeling or not mm-hmm, so much? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah I, and then I, so I had to just hurry up and get to the right. car and leave. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we've had a lot of weird car problems since we've lived here, but just since 2017. Most recently, I had a tire go out on that bridge where I first saw the thing. No. Uh, <laughs> I was driving to work, um, so it was still dark, you know, five, five o'clock in the morning, and I got to that bridge, and my tire blew, oh, and my- I was like, I'm not getting out to change this right now. Not here. <laughs> not on this bridge. I'm not. Um, of all the so places, that's where the tire went? Yeah. I yeah, I wasn't oh. very pleased. <laughs> and I, like I said, I refused to get out. I, I don't know. I called my husband and I had him come and pick me up. <laughs> Amen to that. I, yeah. <laughs> that is the proper response to that situation. And... I mean, a lot of my drive even now is kind of on not very well traveled back roads, which I should really fix that problem. <laughs> um, but anytime it seems like anytime I have car problems, I I'm out on some abandoned road all by myself. <laughs> but that one was kind of the most suspect and the scariest one for me. Um, and this was only a few months ago now. Look, we got to get you working from home. We got to figure I, something out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? We got to keep you That's away from ideal. that bridge. <laughs> it's Oh my gosh. See this stuff mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't know about this stuff. Where Okay, so your son saw red eyes like outside the window or inside his Outside room? the window. Oh jeez. Outside of his window. And so when like I said like he won't he won't sleep in there. Um oh. I tried to convince my daughter that <laughs> they could switch rooms and she could sleep in there and she just I don't know she says it feels it's, it's a creepy room she doesn't like really it. so yeah it's, now, so right now, now that's just a nothing room there's nobody's in there but just to be clear <laughs> they don't know about what you saw exactly yeah I've never so, I would never right. tell them I've never talked about it in front of them so it's not like they're just Oh, a mom saw the scary thing, so the scary thing's outside the house. Like, that's not even in their head. Exactly. Oh. Yep. Nope. We don't, we don't talk about that stuff, so. Well, no, you're, um, you know, you're a good mom for doing that. <laughs> I'd like to that's... shelter them from it for as long as I can, so. <laughs> but that's all just kind of weird with the tire and then the, the, mm-hmm. of course, you, I mean, you didn't see red eyes from the, th- thing that you saw twice that nope. night or that morning but uh, of course it wasn't headlights and I mean I mean we're not trying to assume that's the same thing but it's just kind of odd that that's all going on plus whatever you heard growling what, what was the growling like I mean uh, you know people say like oh it's more like a, a super deep like a lion or uh you know there's different growls if if you will I don't know um I was I would say it was pretty deep but it kind of sounded like like a almost like a grinding sound mm. but almost like mechanical. On, but also like but I could also you know hear the breath with it oh man so I um, but it was like I said like it was like it would be like right on top of my roof like right when I came out the door or like standing right behind the corner of the house I guess if yeah if it was I don't want to say it was the same thing because who knows. Right. Um, But if this eight foot tall thing was standing at the corner of my house where I couldn't see it, it probably would have sounded like that same area. Yeah. You could imagine that. I would have heard it from above. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, which is kind of why I just went back in the house. <laughs> I didn't want to explore that sound. Um, but the other day I did mention that noise to my husband because we were talking about how I was going to come and, you know, talk to you. And I was trying to get my thoughts out to him. <laughs> so I told him about this. I was like, oh, I'd never mentioned this to you. But, you know, about a week or so after I had heard this noise and he, and he said that sometimes when he goes to the post office at night, he would leave the house and hear something like that. What? I know. I was like, how many times? He's like, well, only like twice. Oh but I'm my like, but gosh. Since, I was like, but when, when have you heard it? And he said, it's been um, like once recently and then once maybe like a year ago. <laughs> oh my good Lord. And he, did he? And did he, I, yeah, he said it sounded exactly like I said. And he, like on and the roof. His, yeah. And he sounded like, but he, of course, he was like, um, it could have just been like an echo. Maybe there's a really big dog somewhere. I'm like, we know who lives in our neighborhood. We would know if there was a really big dog. <laughs> you could only hope it was a big dog. But yeah, if yeah. you you know who has what. They're like, oh, oh, yeah, Jim Bob over there got a lion last week. It's kind of <laughs> weird. The echo right. carries right down to our house. Oh, my uh -huh. gosh. So that must have made you feel a little bit better and vindicated when he said that that's huge yes you know at least we were hearing the same yes. thing yes so it wasn't just me hearing stuff <laughs> you're probably like yes he's like what and you're like you're just never mind yes yes <laughs> um and i'm not trying to make light of any of this i'm just i don't want no. you to be you know <laughs> i i know it's not the easiest thing to tell this stuff so so mm -hmm. he's heard it twice and the first time was like a year ago, which oh, mm -hmm. quite fitting for the whole thing, right? Mm hmm The kids. And then, yeah, like once recently. So. And once, how recent? Um, he said a couple months ago, maybe. Oh, geez. <clears throat> so obviously, whatever it is, or they are, they're hanging around. Um, mm -hmm. So setting aside the fact that you said, well, there's kind of family ghosts and they follow us around. Mm-hmm. I mean, how old is your house and what, what's gone on on the land or around e your house in this well, area? We don't know much about the house that we're in. We're renting it. Um, so we don't know a lot about kind of the house in general. I do know um, that this area used to be kind of Iowa Indian territory, which is kind of an off shoot branch of like the Algonquin mm. um but that's all I know um I on a whim I kind of looked at um like a ley lines map mm -hmm. there's one that kind of seems like it goes kind of right over this area but I don't know I don't know much about ley lines so <laughs> I just don't want to speculate on that <laughs> could mean nothing <laughs> if ley lines bring um, out creatures like that i think everybody near them should move the hell away right now that's right. so messed up it was, yeah when i looked at the map on an overlay of kind of the i was like well i guess it kind of makes sense i mean there's a lot of people that think, think there's that a lot that to would. that well god yeah. i mean something that looks like that what the heck that's mm -hmm. something that just walked out of a portal to hell or something um, mm -hmm. and that, I'm not just trying to make light of that. That, that is, no, no, I don't want to see that. That's horrible. I'm sorry that you did. Twice, no less. Once was enough. Yes, um, for sure. <laughs> okay, but we're swinging back, though, to the whole family ghost thing. Do you think there's anything tied into that at all? Like, is there any family history of, you know, because some people find out uh, later on in life that, you know, a uh, great great grandpa or grandma was dabbling in witchcraft, or you know, dabbling in this or playing with Ouija. I don't. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you could come up with. But is there anything like that besides the things out of the corner of your eye that think you think well it might be the family ghosts following us around? You know, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I don't. I've been looking into like family history lately, but I haven't had much luck. Um, every time I bring it up to like my mom, she'll say, I've got enough, I've got enough family. I don't need more dead ones. So she doesn't even want to talk about, um, mm. you know, family history, which 
Hmm. I just try to respect and say, okay, (laughs) you know, I can try and figure it out my own, you know, but I, I think, I don't think anything in the house that I have here has followed me like from my childhood home. It just seems different somehow or. Yeah, I think it's different. It's just a different feeling than the ones that I kind of grew up with. The ones that at least one of the thing, the spirits or ghosts that um, was in the house I grew up in moved with my dad when he, he built a brand new house. Really? In town and it, it followed him. <laughs> what what um, kind of things did he have happening? So he he's kind of a a dead end for <laughs> for spiritual stuff. He doesn't experience any of it. I don't know if he just doesn't notice the things going on around him or <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just <laughs> willfully ignores them. <laughs> yeah. Some people just are. <laughs> they uh-huh. just are that way. Um but after the the first time I went to go we went to go stay with him in his new house after he built it, which is just uh like uh, two years ago now. We we went up and we were all <clears throat> sleeping. Um my middle son, he was sleeping in the bed the bedroom with my husband and I and everything was normal and fine but it it was about two o'clock in the morning I would say this kind of series of things happened all at one time and it I I can't tell you what happened first but I woke up because I felt like I felt like I two arms had gripped my arm as if they were going to pull themselves up on the bed using my arm. Mm. And my son woke up, sat up and just screamed. And he was just screaming in terror and the TV turned itself on. And this all happened at the exact same time. Oh, geez. And so I'm like, I don't know what this happened, what, what just happened, but I knew like my son was scared and I was a little unnerved, um, but it felt familiar. And I was just, you know, my, my dad brought all the furniture from the old house to his new house. And I was like something just came along and wanted to let me know <laughs> that it was still hanging out. <laughs> so, Jeez. yeah. And is that your, is that your, uh, the same son that sees the, the red eyes outside the window? Yes. Mm. So maybe mm-hmm, he's a little one. little more sensitive than some other folks in, in the family too then, huh? I think that's probably true. Um but, oh, you're gonna think I <laughs> you're gonna think I'm crazy. No, um, I promise you I will not. <laughs> when my husband and I got married, we we took our honeymoon, we just traveled around Iowa. I had lived in a different state before and and so I wasn't familiar with Iowa at all. And we, one of the stops we made was the Velisca Axe Murder House. Uh, yes, always wanted to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, um, we had my daughter and then, um, our son. He was, oh gosh, 18 months old at the time. And I was like, well, it's just that all it'll be for them is a house, you know? <laughs> I, mean, we, I was like, we won't tell them like the, the history of it or whatever. Right. We'll just go, we're just going to go look at this house. The whole time that we were there standing in like the kind of kitchen parlor area, my son was kind of playing peeky boo and, and like waving and smiling at something in the corner. And every time I'd look, I was like, is there some toy over there? Cause people bring toys and like little balls or coins to see if they can get like the ch- children's spirits right. to interact with them. So I was like, is he seeing some toy that he thinks he wants? And so he's, you know, laughing. But yeah, every time I would look over there, it was nothing. And he didn't interact with anything else in the house. But every time we went back to that kitchen, he would just wow, he would just light up and smile oh and be such a great time. And I don't know. And yeah, I and like I said, he's he's the one that kind of experiences some stuff so, so that that uh, i mean in a big way that validates the fact that he can differentiate b- between something when he's really little being 
happy, positive, I want to play peekaboo and smile at you versus I'm not sleeping in my room anymore because I saw mm-hmm. something bad. So yeah. that, I mean, that, gosh, that must be really frustrating as a parent because, I mean, what are you supposed to do, right? But then your daughter mm-hmm. said she won't even sleep in that room either. It's the bad room? Yeah, it's um, it's it's just a it's just a bedroom. I don't know. And it's not like we it, the house we rent is pretty small. There's not like there's an excess of bedrooms for everyone to choose from. <laughs> right. But let's everyone sleep in the sleep living room. In there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. It's like she told me she would rather share a room with her brothers <laughs> wow. than sleep in there. And I just you know, and I I asked her why, and she's like, oh, I just don't like it. So, so I didn't want to. And I'm sorry. How it. how old is she? She's uh, almost 11. She's definitely old enough to convey exactly why if she wanted to. So she's maybe mm-hmm. kind of sort of holding something back if she's seen something then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, I, yeah. <laughs> or maybe she just trusts her brother enough to go, well, if he doesn't want to sleep in there, I don't want to sleep in there either. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Like, she's like, look, I know my brother, and if he's not going in there, neither am I. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, that's that's recent stuff. That's why it's not, you know, like I said, it's not like 10 years ago, so it's not. Mm-hmm. We're, we're giggling and laughing because I'm trying to keep it light. I don't want to make it heavy for you because it's already hard enough to share, but um, this is like mm-hmm. ongoing stuff then. So. Yes, yeah. So nobody sleeps in that room. Right, yeah. Nobody sleeps in that room. That's. And are you are you uh, feeling and I don't, okay? I don't think I Sorry. don't think the last people that lived here. I don't think anyone slept in that room <gasps> when we moved in. All that was in there was just a lot of cat hair. No <laughs> like way! The, they put the cat in there. Your, yeah, like this is just the cat's room. What? I, it wasn't. Nobody slept in there. It looks like so. Hmm. There's a weird thing about some of the doors in this house, and I don't. I don't want to. You know creep out the landlord by asking about it but I'm, I've always been curious it looks like there was locks installed on the outside of the bedroom doors oh no and I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why that would be a... oh I just got the chills that would freak me out pretty bad <laughs> like they're not there anymore but you can see yep. where they have those little Ye- bar yep. locks yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. nope that's not that's not cool yeah but yeah, like I said, I don't want to. I don't right. want it. Right. You're like, <laughs> so uh, what's been going on in this house? Why would right. you need to lock someone inside a room? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, or whatever, something. Or yeah. Yeah. We've also had some some electrical issues, which it's just an old house, so that's not too surprising. Right. But uh, I think a week and a half ago, part of the part of the house kind of shorted out and everything went black. And uh, like when I looked over, I could see this kind of white reflection in our kitchen window, like walking past it. And there was nobody out there. There was nobody, there was nobody in our kitchen at the time, but it looked like a reflection of someone walking in Mm. the kitchen. Mm. (laughs) And so I'm still trying to figure out, what that was because it was right after the electricity shorted and right i don't know which is interesting because if if you watch a lot of the the shows or you know you read a book on this stuff they say that they they try to draw energy from whatever they can and then they can manifest or do whatever they need to do right Mm -hmm. so that's yeah i mean not i'm assuming i'm not assuming that's what it was i'm just saying that's an interesting part of this Mm -hmm. to see a Reflect. So it was a human shaped reflection. Nothing like you saw on the road that night. I mean, yeah, it looked, it looked like just like a white figure, okay. kind of walking past, as if, yeah, you know, as if maybe my daughter had been out in the kitchen and walking past, but I knew she wasn't. Right, she was next to me. So did did oh did she see that? No, she she didn't. That's that's good, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, she was she was busy with her iPad, of course. There you go. <laughs> I mentioned that in the beginning. They're always <laughs> their faces are down, and sometimes you're happy for it. Uh, yeah, and in, not a lot, but in instances like that, boy, those iPhones <laughs> and iPads come in handy. So, 
I mean, I mean, are you, do you guys get sleep? I mean, is this something that you, you think about? And then obviously the kids have their own, especially your son. He won't even sleep in his own room. Mm -hmm. So Um, is everyday life kind of affected now for everybody? Yeah. um, Yeah. Nobody gets a lot of sleep, but I would say my middle son, he has, like I said, he's been having like nightmares and night terrors kind of pretty consistently. Just about, I think most recently, not last night, last night he was having nightmares about his sister playing with his toys. <laughs> which Also horrifying. What a, what a, <laughs> night, what a nightmare. <laughs> but um, last week he, he, he kind of woke up and was just inconsolable. And all he could say was, he's too fast. He's too fast. And oh I had no God. idea. It scared me. I I couldn't talk him out of it, and I couldn't get more details. He just kept saying, he's just too fast. Of course, your and, mind is going to, you know, what you, what you saw, right? I mean, uh, what do you mean yeah. he's too fast? It, it just, probably to you, you're like, this is tying in way too much. Mm-hmm. I was like, I agree. He is too fast. No. Um, <laughs> right? You're like, you're right. <laughs> But I, I mean, I, I have nightmares about this thing and it's just like that. It's just nightmares about that. Mostly the first sighting, just it turning its head and staring. And usually when that happens, I'll wake up and I'll feel like I'll wake up and I'll have been talking in my sleep. I do that a lot, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll be trying to get rid of like spider webs on my face. Mm. Like it'll feel like something was like touching my face Mm -hmm. whenever I have these nightmares and I always wake up and it's nothing, you know, (laughs) my husband's like, are you dreaming about spiders? Like, no, I just feel like there was something on my face, but I've never seen anything in the house. Thank goodness. Um, Like that anyway, like that thing. But I do have nightmares about it sometimes. Like I said, sometimes I, have trouble leaving the house (laughs) or um, I'll leave the house. But by the time I get to my car, I'm just so creeped out that I need to lock the doors. And I don't know. I mean, a lot of people think that there are, you know, uh, answers that can come in, in dreams. And I mean, it, when you're having, and it's not a dream, it's a nightmare, obviously, if you're dreaming about that thing, has it ever come to you in a in a dream slash nightmare? I- any more clues about what you saw? No, like I said, like it's it'll be like it's just replaying yeah. exactly what happened, yeah. and it's frustrating sometimes. You know, like if you're gonna come in a dream or nightmare, at least like <laughs> at least give me something, right? You know, give me some hint. Do you think the but. the cobwebs somehow are a hint? I mean, I don't I don't even know how to begin to when you first said it. I'm like, how does that tie in? I don't quite. Know. I don't know. I I wouldn't think it it does, but it's just like a that weird. I don't know, like a weird feeling. Does that happen often? Where you have nightmares about it? It kind of goes in in waves. I haven't had it a lot lately, but sometimes it'll be like every night for a while and then it'll go away again and then pop back up <laughs> yeah because nobody um, needs sleep i mean you don't need to sleep yeah. no big deal yeah <laughs> it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah it's totally fine i'm fine you just put that in my head again i it, once wasn't enough it's fine <laughs> well twice twice in real life not once one yeah. incident total but uh it's, two sightings yeah it's <laughs> Two sightings, one oh. event. I mean, with your son going through that too, it must be kind of frustrating. I mean, because as as a parent, you just want to be like, "No, your room is fine. Like, just go sleep in your room. It's cool. Like, mom and dad are here. Everything's cool." But he's like, "No, I'm not. No, it's not gonna happen." Yeah, and we've we've tried everything to get him to go back. We've tried and like, we'll get you nightlight. Right. And we'll, we got you the special bedding, and look, your your room's all decorated. No interest. He'll sleep. He'll lay in his bed as long as someone will sit by his bed with him. Oh. And if he falls asleep and then wakes up and you're not there, it's like this. It's bad. It's 
he just runs around the house in terror and you can't oh you can't gosh. convince him everything's fine so that's that's the worst part is that he gets when he gets like that like he'll just it's like he's he looks like he's awake but he can't be I'm like he obviously isn't he won't respond he thinks everything is terrifying like you, you can't approach him when he's like that because he thinks that you're coming to get him I don't know what he's seeing and he can't explain it so and we've talked to his doctor about it and they said it, I mean night terrors are just kind of a thing that young kids go through right. and they say oh <laughs> he'll, like, he'll yeah, grow I out of it right I yeah I, I don't know my daughter never went through a phase like this like I've never seen it is it always and a so, thing with red eyes for him like is that across the board or is it always something just different scary um, every time he's tried to explain it, it, he's been talking, he talks about red eyes. So I don't know. I'm sorry about that. That's not, you know, as a parent, that's, I can't imagine mm -hmm. that's going to be extremely frustrating. Cause you just want them to be happy and go to sleep and sleep well. And the next day is happy. And well, and you just want to protect them. And I have no idea. Like, I don't know right. I, the first thing about protecting him from whatever it is he's seeing. You know, whatever, if it's a night terror and it's just something his mind is creating, I don't know how to stop that for him. Or Do you think it's connected to what you saw? I don't know. I think he's been having the issues with the thing with red eyes longer than, you know, my incident. Not to say that they couldn't be right. related, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, well, this won't be the last time that we, we speak. I'm going to give you some more of my contact info so that we'll be in touch. And, again, anybody out there listening, get a hold of me through, you know, you guys know I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the whole spiel of social media sites. You can message me on any of those or email me directly, Shannon at IntoTheFrayRadio.com. If you have any input or... Just anything that can help uh, us both, you know, kind of understand what's going on here or anything similar that, that you've gone through, a family member or an old article or something. I mean, there's there all kinds of um, tentacles out there that people can help with as far as research, and we would certainly appreciate that. So, um, yeah, I don't, I just, any, any insight or answers, I mean, yeah. I have no clue like i said like i i didn't believe that anything more than ghosts or spirits could be real and so I'm kind of a shock for me <laughs> yeah. um you know i just any answers any any ideas people might have it just kind of makes you wonder you know when you're out there alone what's what what else is out there with you that you can't see yeah and why did you see it yeah why were you so blessed to see that? I mean, really, <laughs> right? Some people are like, that's God. awesome. No, it's not. That's I'm, not. Yeah. No. People people might think they would like to see no. that. I can tell you that you would not like to see that, especially if it sees you. I don't know. Mm -mm. Yeah, like I said, I just, I would just hope I never have to see it myself again. Obviously, nightmares are different, but. Right. Well, yeah, but that's still. In person, I would love to never see it again. <laughs> I mean, what a huge deal. I mean, as human beings, we need sleep. And between you mm -hmm. and, and your son, you guys are going through a lot. And I I don't want to mm -hmm. diminish that at all because whatever's going on is it's affecting everyday life. And it's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, anybody with any input, please, 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 please get a hold of me. I will pass along the information. Thank you so much for reliving that. And I just... I hope that talking to me tonight after just emailing me kind of kicked things up. So I hope that I'm a little weary about what actually telling it again has done. So I'm I'm out here for you and other people are, are going to be getting in contact. They always do. My listeners are great. So um, thank you for taking the time out to tell this. Well, thank you, Shannon. I, I can't tell you how, how much better it feels listening and you know not 
thinking I'm just crazy. So I appreciate you so much. You are not crazy at all. The, I, mean, the, I mean, thankfully, there are some differences, I will say, because between my encounter and your encounter, the thing that you <laughs> saw was way worse than mine. And how many times, I don't know if you have ever heard me say it, even though they were all completely blank shadow figures, like I said, yours is way worse. I'm not comparing. I'm just saying that I've said it before. I think it would have been a different experience had one or any of them or all of them looked over at me. I've said mm -hmm. that before. So yeah. that's why, you know, when you, when that was part of your story, I'm like, oh my gosh, I really identify with that big time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, like I said, if it hadn't looked, it would have been right easier to dismiss it. And I probably could have gotten through it and over it, but just, Right. And what an interesting point that you made, though. You're like, well, if we made, quote unquote, eye contact, you didn't see its eyes, but quote unquote, eye mm -hmm. contact, would I have seen it that second time crouching in the road? You know, it's, right. it's an interesting you know, did thought. It, did it, is it used to maybe not being seen, you know, right. and then it, no, it saw that I saw it and then was interested. Well, if you and your son are kind of the sensitive ones in your, you know, immediate family. Um, mm -hmm. that, that could be why. So, and again, people are like, you're blessed. You, you're sensitive. You see things and you're like, I, pff, take it. I don't want it. I mean, my God, I want to sleep. <laughs> I'd like, right? I'd like to sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. I, I want me yeah. and my son to sleep. He like, I mean, his room is nice. Nothing wrong with it as far as we can mm -hmm. tell. But you know, when you're seeing stuff like that, forget it. And see, I'm sure that in the same instance, people that are going through this stuff in your own homes, like you and your son, you're like, I'd rather have not heard the growling on the roof mm -hmm. or for my son to see those red eyes outside. That's messed up. Yeah. It's not right. It's your own house. So you're supposed to feel safe and and, and secure and damn it, sleep mm -hmm. at night. So. Yeah. There's it, it, there's <laughs> levels of silly PTSD with real PTSD, and then it, mm -hmm. it does affect how you move about your house and how you interact with your house. So, so yeah, guys out there, a lot to consider. Get a hold of me, and I will transfer it on to uh, my guest tonight. So, yes, and uh, and thank you so much. I know it's getting a little bit late there. I don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> thank you so much for reliving all of that uh, for us. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bark. Buddha says, forget it. That's not true. That's some story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Well, nobody knows who that is. is it? Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real evil, and that again leads us back to this question. Uh, who are you? That is the real evil. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are.
after your funeral, you know, you will suddenly become somebody different, living somewhere else. They will say reincarnation means this, that if you sitting here now are really convinced that you're the same person who walked in at the door half an hour ago, you're being reincarnated. If you are liberated, you will understand that you're not. The past doesn't exist. Zen master Dogen put it in this way. He said, the spring does not become the summer. First there is summer, and then there is spring. Kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight. 